Hello, I'm Colin Bradley. In this video, I'm going to show you how to produce an outline drawing from reference photographs using my square drawing grid system. Now, most people would like to draw accurately, and no matter which art medium we choose to work in, the basic drawing has to come first. Using the square drawing grids, my students are able to produce a quick and accurate drawing in a fraction of the time it would take a freehand drawing to be completed. So I'm going to show you how to draw three very different subjects using the grids and I'm sure you'll agree that the system takes away the frustration of trying to get it right. So let's get started. Let me show you what's in a square drawing pack. This will be the front cover and we have full instructions. This is the one inch transparent grid. And we have two other grids, half inch grid and a quarter inch grid. And I'll show you how we use those in a little while. We also give you three paper grids. These have got one inch squares, the same as the one inch transparent grid. And what we suggest you do with these is either have them photocopied at your local photocopy shop, or you can use your computer and you can then have an unlimited supply of them. Finally, we have the trace down graphite carbon. Now this graphite carbon is really, really great and you'll see how we're going to use that in a moment. This is the first picture we're going to be square drawing. Now to start off with, as I said, you need to cut this into two. I've already done that here because we're going to need this as well as the one inch grid in a moment. Now put that to one side. And let's bring back the picture. Now, what we've got to do here, and I would suggest you do this, is you attach this to a board. Now, I've got a very simple one. This is actually in the square drawing, so you could use this one. It's in, in the backing sheet for the carbon, but something similar. And what we do with that, get some tape over and take that on. Now, what's most important really is this mustn't move. Once we set this up, doesn't move at all so by putting it onto the board it gives it a little bit more security and also the one inch grid now this is where we get a bit tricky right let me come a little closer and I can show you what I mean now the idea here is to free the really important details like the eyes the nose and the mouth let's move this up just a touch now and I'll position that in such a way that I can see one eye Clearly, you can't get both in, but that's not bad. If it's in the top half of that, you'll understand what I mean in a moment or two. Just bring it down just a bit more. Now, that is just about perfect. Just here, I'm obscuring now just a little bit of the nose. So I can either come this way, which would be better to do, because then I've got good lips, good reference area on the nose, and I've got a good reference area in the eye. Okay, now fix it in that position. Now at the top, use some more tape and tape it along the top. This, the most important thing with square drawing is that you have it secure. That mustn't move. If it does, you're in trouble. Got it? Now that's perfect. Now that's the reference, but now we want to draw it. I've got a, quite a stout board here and it's a good idea to have one. And again, it's a good idea to tape it to that. Don't have to do this, but it's a good idea because it keeps everything nice and firm. Sorry, I'm bashing the camera stand. Okay, now there we are. Now we've got that drawing, we've got our reference and we're ready to go. Well, almost. Now this, uh, this other grid, which is a half inch grid, you see it's exactly one, four times the size of one of these. Now if, and later on, and I'll show you, I won't do it to start with because I want to get the outline in, but later on I want to bring this in. Now you, you, this has to be moved around, you can't have this attached to it. And you really only use one corner, but there are other reasons why I have a whole grid and I'll show you that in a moment. So you just put that on there. Now you can see what I've done now. I've got a tighter reference area. See? And remember I said about the nose area? Well that now comes 
nicely in those squares. The lips come in those squares. And you do have a little bit of jiggling around. And it's not critical, but it does help, as you will see in a little while. And we'll come back to that in just a tick. But let's get started with the actual drawing. And the first thing I'm going to be doing is drawing the outline of the picture following the grids. You'll notice too that we have here letters and we have numbers. Now the idea of this is you'll never get lost because if I'm, let's say for instance, I want to do that I, I've got 5D, 5D, that's where the I goes. Got it? Anyway, let me get started. As I say, I'll do the, I'll start off and talk about the, this for a little while and then I'll carry on without narration until I've got the whole of this image in. I'll come away a little bit because otherwise you won't see it all but uh, I'm sure you'll get the idea of that. Now I'm going to start by putting this in. So let's start with that. See we've got four and five so four starts here now, this is not so critical. Oh, by the way, I ought to tell you that I'm using a B or 2B pencil. B or 2B is ideal for drawing because it erases easy and you're going to erase quite a lot. And the other thing, don't draw a line, just sketch it in like that so that you can get a better idea of how it's working now here. What we're looking for here is getting that so that it's not quite halfway there, like that. Follow it through, and you'll see that I'll come down. And again, I'm not drawing the line. We can do that afterwards, but for the moment, what we're doing is now wanting this little bit here. Okay, so we come down like that, and then a little bit there, like that. Okay, and then we pick that up on this area. Now, I think you'll agree that that's pretty straightforward, isn't it? Now, this hair is not so as critical as it would be if you were doing an eye, because we'd have to be a little bit more careful now, like that. Now, that's just about perfect on the line, right? There's one thing I want to show you, though. Over here, if I move across, you'll see that the hair has been blown up. And what we don't want like that, we, we want to make this a little, a little more attractive. So, coming into three now, remember, we're coming down here, and I, you've got to guess this now, so I would guess that that would come to about there, like that, that's not critical, like that, and then pick up on the other side of there, like that, and then we come down onto two, all right, like that, now let's just do that last little bit, it's coming from here, remember, about, about a third of the way, like that, and then it comes down to there, you can, in fact, a lot of my students put little crosses on, like you know where it comes, so we know it's coming from there, it's coming from there. And then you've got the angle to use it like that. Now what I'm going to do is going to go all the way around and I'll show you little bits and pieces as we drop around on this. And then once we've got the outline in, I'll then come back and I'll show you how we get all. Well, let me just show you this now because I can, I can save some time. This is three, and the second one down, so it's three. So we're coming into here, this is where the hair is parting about there and you see it just cuts on that edge of that there okay. and it comes across now it sweeps now to here just to there so we come down and we sweep to there now we, this is where we can make a slight adjustment because that's because we've got the different squares we're not using we're not free free enough to do it in one so, but that looks good now okay so that's the and then we come across the eye here and just a little bit of that and that drops in and then we've got the edge of the face now the edge of the face comes here now let's just do that now that is five and it's um, I've lost the game. 5d right okay so we come down here and it's about there. It's much easier to do this because you've got the squares to help you. Like that. All right, so that's that. And let me just do this last little bit here. It's, and then I'll break off and you'll see me go all the way around. Uh, 
Now you could ask me, could could you not use the half inch grid? Well, you can actually. What what you would do with this is you can put the half inch grid on that section there, like that. Let me show you like that. This is what I've just done. Now. What you'd have to do here is to, you could, I would suggest you measured it, but um, just for safety's sake, I'm not going to do that. So there we are. Just draw a light, very light line like that. So here we are, and we've got the square like that. Now, am I right? Not far out, am I? You see how that line comes down there? As I say, because it's hair, it's not critical. And I'll be doing that with the eye in a moment. But what I'll do before I get there, I will actually put the squares on here with a little more accuracy than I've just done there. But this is the idea of it. Now let me continue all the way around and um, show you little bits and pieces as I go. I'm just finishing off the surround now. And you can see we just bring this down here, keep that line there, and then tail off to there. Small things like this are quite important, so let's put this in. It's a little dress detail. It can be quite, quite nice to do something like that because um, it adds a little colour to your picture. Very well, now that's going to around here like that. Um, this is not quite so critical, this sort of thing. This can be um, adjusted once we do the drawing. It's the features that we can't play with. But that, I think, looks good. There's another little, you can see there's a, another line down there. Well, we, we put that in as well. We can use it later. Now we've got to just double check this because I think that I've got that just a little bit too. Let me just show you what I mean by adjustment. Small adjustments. Now, if you were freehand drawing, all of this would be on the paper. The great thing about square drawing is it's all done off the drawing surface. So you know, we're going to be doing. I'll be doing this in pastel. In case you're wondering, this is my daughter. There we are. Now that's that's much better. Now we've got the overall picture. Now that's pretty good, isn't it? So let's now concentrate on the features, which are really the most important part of all. And it's not as hard as you think. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some crosses here. In fact, I'm going to crisscross all of the whole of this area 
here. So let me show you how I do that. Now we get your rule and we work out, but still keep the reference handy. Uh, I can't put it in on the screen because I, I want to show you this in close up, but I've got it over here. Let me show you. I've got it over here. So I should be looking at that. Anyway, let me just continue with this for a moment. Now the eye here, it's in, we want that one. So this. Now I'm using a, an HB pencil now. now. This is a softer pencil than the 2B. Come down, if you're going to do the whole lot, you might as well do it all. A little mark there. You could also do this in red pen. You don't have to do it in this color. And then we just do the same here. Little mark there, little mark there. You may think, well, that's a lot of work, Colin. Do I need to do all that? No, you don't have to, but if you want accuracy, and as you'll see, in portrait work, it's really important to have it accurate. Now then, now we just draw our lines, keep them light, don't put them too heavy. And you'll see in a moment how easy this is actually to work out. You don't have to do this, you could, you could just guess it. But I don't guess anything, and I wouldn't suggest you do either. There you go. Anyway, this is fun. You don't have to do this with anything else. It's only where you have details. And when we, I'll show you the animal in a moment, uh, you'll see how important that is. Now, here we go. I've cuffed, pulled back again, but now I'm going to use a half inch grid. Now, I would strongly recommend you do this one at a time. Don't cross over. Just do one square, just this, use this square. Even hide it up for the moment because we're just concentrating on this one. And what we got to do now is to work at the same idea, come, come from the edges, about there, and bring it across. Remember, we're looking one small reference area. It just tickles into that area there, but it comes away and See how small that eye is now. You wouldn't have credited that, would you? That it was as small as that. And that goes into the next square, which we'll do separately. But this is what we're looking for at the moment. Come in with that. Just a little higher. You can see I've got to, that's just that little bit more. And you can always adjust the hair. Not that that's important. It's the eye that's important. drops down like that. The more you get used to this, the better you'll be at it. Now there's a little bit more of a gap there, so come in there once again. Look how narrow that eye is. Right, don't worry about details. What we've got to do now is put the pupil in. And the pupil is there and it comes right onto the edge of that, which is handy for us. So there's our pupil. Okay, now let's move it, move it along just one to the next one, which is this one. And we can now follow that through. And that now drops away there and drops away there. Like that. There's one eye. And while we're here, let's sort the nose out too, because we've got the nose coming from here. Now, we've got to be careful with noses because you, you don't really want a line, but you've still got to put the line in on the reference. You know, just pull that a little bit further over. So it's a good idea to make it like that, where you have the depth here. I'll show you when we come to transfer this over in a little while, I'll show you how we can make that a little less obvious comes down to there and then we have the start of the tip of the nose coming in here and it's just there and then we have the other section coming there like that okay now I'm gonna what I'll do now is because it's taken a lot of time up I'm gonna 
continue with this and I'll do it square by square by square. And then once I've done that, you then look at back of it and see whether or not there's any adjustments you can make. But it's, so far, it's coming along really well. Now, as you get used to doing this, you can speed up. So that's what I'm going to do at the moment. You can just do a very rough drawing, not as precise as it was before, but you can, and I'm using the HB pencil here because it's not so strong. You see HB on there uh, as the 2B, but we can still use the 2B in a moment. I'll show you how we come back on this now. Just, just, just rough. Everything's everything. So you can see once you start doing this, you can see the, the the lines, and you can see where you need to make small adjustments. Like you see that that line there breaks right on, very handy for us, right on the little bit of detail in the lip, and then come back in here. Now that's, that's pretty good actually. But now we need to go back over it again, and I'll use my two B now because I need to be a little bit more punchy with it. Do this centre line first. See, it's not as much as you think. You always think it's more. You look at that and think, oh, it goes like that, but it doesn't. It's much, it's much more subtle than that. Let's drag into there. Now that's, that's as far as we want to go. And here, remember this is a sketch. I'll show you in a moment. Once we I've got all the outlines in, which we nearly have now. Um, I'll show you how we transfer all of that through the graphite carbon onto the line drawing. Here, from here, almost to the line, but not quite. Now, this is one of the hardest things you can do, the portrait. That's why I've started with this. But you try to do that with freehand and see what sort of mess you get into. There we are. Now there we are. There's our picture. Just take that off now because we don't need it anymore. And there's our... I've got one or two little things I should do more. But basically, there's our drawing. And all we're looking for is an outline drawing at this stage. Because the pastel pencil or the watercolour or the oil, whatever you're going to be using, or acrylic, um, you can use the paints to do the rest. But all the while you've got the proportions correct. So let me now show you how we can transfer that onto uh, our drawing surface, which might, in my case, it would be a pastel. Now, with our sketch already, we position it. I'll put this onto pastel paper because this is the surface I would draw it on. And we want to move it over, over so that we've got the epaulet. You just about see that epaulet right on the edge of that. So that now is positioned nicely. Tape it again along the top. There we are. Great. And now we use the carbon. This is a graphite carbon. So it can be erased. If you make a mistake, it can be erased. Now you put it carbon side down onto your drawing surface. Pastel paper, watercolour paper, acrylic paper, whatever you've got. And then we're ready to transfer it. And I would, again, I would use the HB pencil for this uh, because it's a sharper point. The 2B really isn't um, man enough for the job. It will make too thick a line. So let's get to transfer this. Okay, let's go. Now, what we've got to do is follow the line...
that we put in. Remember, it's a line drawing. It's not meant to be a full portrait. So just follow the line round. Like that. Now I won't do it all. I'll just do that. And then I'll do this, this little corner here. Another one is there. Now this is a graphite line, so if, if you do make a mistake, it's not irreversible. Now let's put the eye lid in. The eye. Come down. And then now I will continue that. The thing I wanted to, to show you though is you don't do that line. Leave that one alone. The reason being, if you were using watercolour or pastel pencils and you put a hard line in there, it's hard to get out. So what do you do when you leave it? Just put in the ones that are going to be obvious like that. Now let me just pull that off and show you how that is transferred through. Got it? Perfect. Because we can redraw onto that, as I will show you in a minute. Let me finish it off going over the lines, then we'll come back and I'll show you how we can go back over these lines again, making them just that little bit richer. But bear in mind, if it's a graphite drawing, well then you can probably do a little bit more work on it. But with pastel pencils or watercolour, you don't want these lines to show. So you only want lines that you've indicated on your drawing. Why don't you do that line? Well that line you see would be a hard line coming down there and it's sometimes hard to get rid of them. So I wouldn't do that. I'd, I'd wait and I'm going to wait until I use my pastel pencil for that and I'll develop that. But I've got all of the important lines to indicate where that should be. I've transferred all the lines over now so we can get rid of line drawing and get rid of the carbon we're left with our image and we can get rid of the grid on there so now I'm ready to start pastel paper but say almost ready because now what I'm going to do is go over again with my HB pencil now the reason I'm using HB now is rather than the B is because I'm going to use pastel pencils and I don't want the graphite to show and mix with the pastel. So I'm just going to go, now this is a little rougher now because I now know what I'm doing. I know where my drawing is meant to be. I've already done this little section. So let's just finish this off. Put my little bit of, little bit of dress in there, which I made just a little bit more of than was on the original because it make it look a little prettier. And I'll finish that off in a minute. But the most important thing is the line, which is the whole idea of this. And then bring that down there. That's the collar. And we make this just a little bit more arty. That's the hair. Pastel pencils are fantastic because what you can do with them is you can put all the detail in there. Now just go around there. Remember this is graphite. So if I need to, I'm just make just a little bit more of that and a little bit more of that. And see a little smile there. There we are. And that is fine. Let's just put a little detail on the eye. And then I can show you how this is going to look when it's all drawn in. Now, I don't think you can argue that that is a very good system of drawing and very quick. I mean, it took me longer than it would normally take you, I'm sure, but because I was showing you how to do it. But there we are. Now there's the picture and there's the copy. And even there, you can see that it looks like that. 
So there we are. I hope you enjoyed that. I've got uh, more to do. I'm not going to do the pastel pencil now, and that will be done another day. But the next picture I'm going to show you will be an animal. Now, the grids can also double in size. And this is a smaller picture of the larger picture that I had before. And what you need to do here is to use the smaller grid. Now, I've already established this saves some time. You can see how it works. The smaller grid over the picture is exactly the same as the one inch. So this is a half inch. This is a one inch. And it's going to work the same way. Now let me show you how it works. I've already put the cross on here. And what I did here, I used a sepia pen. Uh, but you could use a red pen or you can use a... It depends. It's easier for me to show you though. Now let's first of all put the, the outline in. I'll do what I did before. I'll put this on here so that you can see both. Right. Now we come here, same as before, same as we did before, and the same lettering as well, so we, it, it makes it nice and easy for us. Come over and pick up down here that tiny little bit we did before, if you remember, like that. And then if we follow it through, I'll speed this up. Come through here, down here, to about halfway, that's about there, and then down the rest of it. And it, it's close to the edge here until it gets to there, and then we fan out. And you won't need to do any more of that, you've seen that now. Up here, we come from again here, across the corner. To the eye and then eventually link up with the face okay like that now the eye now the eye as you can see here that's too big this this square here represents this square here so what do we do with that well what we do that is use the smaller grid this is the quarter inch grid the quarter inch grid superimposes on there and now we have the same situations we had before, except now we want to make it larger. So we follow that inside there. I hope you can see that okay. This line here is this line here. So we've got to get the eye in, almost all of it, in that box there. Now let's start the ball rolling. And it continues on the other side there. And then that's the eyelid. And this you can see is quite close to the bottom. And so like that, and then we've got the pupil in, which is almost spot on that line there, just a little to one side of it. And in there. There we are. Now, no need for me to do any more, but um, you can see how it works. And I still prefer, and would prefer you to blow your original picture up that you've got and do it one-to-one. -one. Because going up, it, it works, as you can see, but it's a little more tricky to do that. So it's better to have it as a larger picture. Anyway, that's transferred in the same way as before. So now I'm going to show you the next subject, which will be a German Shepherd. Now I'm going to use the square drawing system on this beautiful German Shepherd. As you see, it's a lovely photograph. I've already put the one inch grid to divide it up. As you can see, it works out really well. The eyes are clear. The nose is clear. Now it's the eyes and the nose, which will be difficult here. So what I've done, I've divided them up as you can see, in half-inch squares, just over the eyes and over the nose. So what we have to do now is to put the half-inch grid, as we did with the portrait, on those tricky areas. And it's probably a good idea just to put a bit of tape on that to hold it. You don't have to do this. You can leave that free, the half-inch, but I think it's sometimes a good idea just to hold it in place. Make sure I've got it right. There you go. There, that's not going to move now. So what we're going to do now is to draw it. So let's start with the ear. I've 
tucked out right over the ear, but I think I can still see it. Now, we know we come from here, okay, and we join up with what we've got down here. Now, I put lines in, but really what I tend to do this is do that. You can put a line in because you don't have to transfer it through to your uh, drawing. You can do that when it comes to the drawing. That's what I tend to do. Anyway, let's just continue with this. Now, we've got a little problem here. You can see I haven't got the tip of the ear. Uh, what do we do about that, Cole? Well, I'll show you what we do. Let's just draw that in so that we got that coming down to meet the other area like that. And then do the other side, which is the other side of that line there. Let's do that. It comes out a little bit and it comes not quite halfway there. And then let's continue that. See, it's really better if you don't have the half inch grid on, but you'll see you get the benefit of that in a minute or two. It just comes to come out there and we might as well complete that area now. This set area coming down here, I'm using the finger to point with so you can see what I'm doing. Comes out a little bit there, comes down there. You can always go back over this again once you've um, established it and check it out. And then we have the eye coming down here and then down around there. Now this is where the half inch grid comes in useful. You see that? Now we can see where we need to be in the half inch, which is there. And then it breaks away and comes out there. And then we've got the, the nose coming down. Uh, we might as well do that while we're here. Now you see that comes from that eye there, so it's there, like that, comes down, comes across here, watch my finger here at the same time, and over, and then it comes up to right onto that corner, which is handy, like that. So, now what do we do about this top ear? Well, you have to guess it. Now you can see that if you would do that, like that. That's how it would end up. So we just have to wing it like that. Okay, got it? That's the way we do that. Now you could say, well, why can't you put the other square in? Well, you could, but I wanted to show you how you can get away with something like that. Now there's also a another line which we need to put in there that comes down to there and then we've got another line here and this has come from from this bit here right so we come down here over there once you get used to square drawing you can speed up because it's not critical especially on the fur that it's absolutely spot on it's only the eyes and nose and those critical areas that you'll need to be careful with. And then we could just also do the inner ear. I won't bother with that. I think you can see it. But the important thing now is the eye. Now the eye is D, which is there. So it's six and it's in that one there. That's where we've got to put it. So let's take a lot more care over this. It's right on the edge. You see that? And it comes down to about just a little over halfway there and then it cuts in now these these eyes and all these features were, are much smaller than you think they are this is if you were freehand drawing now i guarantee you'd make that eye bigger and you it wouldn't look right folks i can tell you because unless you get it right uh, and that and then what i would also do with them is also bring bring that shadow into play like that now, is that smaller than you thought? I bet it is. Um, put a little light in the eye as well. And no, no need to do too much more than that. That's enough because when we use our, or when I use my pastel pencils, I can. Now, we're just doing this little bit here, I think, as well, while I'm, I'm up in this vicinity. That comes right into that corner there and then joins up with that. There we are. Looks silly, but it's that's proportionally correct. Now, what about the nose? Come down the nose. This is another awkward, awkward shape. Now we come down right on that corner, you see, 
and then come in there like that. Got a little slight bump there, but it's not, you don't make it too obvious. And it comes around. Now we've got to get all of that in the square. Down like that, and in, into there like that. And we know it's correct because we ended up at the same place. And then down in here, like that. Now this line is in the wrong side, you see? Go, let's get rid of it. Take it out. Great thing about the graphite. So now we, we're going to make it right now. It comes down there, like that. And that comes right, almost on that line. Like that. Here we are. And uh, there's a little, that little bit there is interesting. Put it in. Like that. And then we've got the nostril that comes over the top here. And in and down in there. There we are. And if you want to put some of these shadows in, it's a good idea at this stage. You see that comes across there like that. And there's another one there. And there's a marking. My nice idea to put something like that in. Okay, so anyway, that's how it's done, folks. Now let me just fill that in. You don't have to do this, but it's sometimes a good idea just to see how this is all going to look. And that's how it's going to look. Now, just here, we've got an, another, I haven't finished yet, so let me do that. Like that. There we are. Now, that can be taken off. Just now finished off. That's then transferred to your drawing surface by means of the graphite, which you've seen before. I won't bother to do that again. We've seen it done once. But whatever you're going to draw on, whether it's going to be a watercolour paper or engrais paper, in my case it would be engrais, uh, or acrylic, or whatever. So that's the procedure with the German Shepherd. And now, something completely different, I'm going to show you how we tackle a landscape. Now the next picture is a gorgeous landscape. This is Scotney Castle in Lamberhurst. It's in Kent in England and I've been there several times. It's a beautiful place. It's a ruin as you can see. Uh, there's a lot of crumbling going on up here. But so I think it adds to the charm. One other thing I'll just mention before we start is, you see it's a drain pipe down there. Well. That's pretty ugly, so that won't be included on my picture. Let me show you how I set this up as a square drawing and the paper grid that we're going to work from. I've already started the ball rolling because it takes quite a long time to do something like this. But what I want to show you is a few things that will help you to understand how square drawing works in a landscape. Ignore the half inch grid for the moment. I'll bring that into play in a little while. So let me just first of all show you how we operate the just the top part of this. It's difficult for me to get it all in, so I'm hoping that to, to get close enough for you to see it. Now, let's do this first of all, this area here. And we've got to do, the, the way to do this is to imagine where the lines end. Now you can see I've already done the top one, but just here, this is where this line here crosses there. It's about there. Judge it like that. Put that in there. Now let's just do the first line, which is there. I'm going to put my finger on the line so you can see what I'm looking at. And we go up to there like that, and then drop it down to there. We don't want to quite reach the bottom there. So this is where that's going to cross in a minute. And the other thing is, let's go from down to here, which is about different. The line, it's the distance from the lines to the edge of the subject, which is there. So we want it to be about there, which means if I draw a line there, coming from there to there, it's going to be pretty accurate. Got it? Now, a couple of little things. Let's put just another a second line in here. And then we can complete this tower. 
if you imagine that as an imaginary line coming down there, it would be, and we've also got this to help us as well, so we put that in there like that. Okay, and we've got another pane of glass which comes there, and another one which comes there. And then we've got this area that comes over there. So let's just put that in. And you see it sticks out a little bit from there, so it will come down like that. And all we're looking for really is the rough shape because we can redraw this. Now we've got one other comes in here like that. Then we've got that like that, and then you've got this. You can just about see under there, but it's like that, like that, and like that. So now what we've got to do is redraw it slightly. Quite a lot of artistic license with something like this, as long as you've got the rough idea of where it goes. Now, what I'd also do there is just erase it. This is why I use a 2B pencil, because it does erase really well. But I don't want to get rid of it altogether. Now we've got, now we've got the idea, we can then redraw it. You see why this takes quite a long time. But it's still quicker and more accurate to do it this way than if you were doing it freehand. Now that, that's got to be fairly... Accurate, and it comes down into there, like that, and then there, and then we can pick up this line, and then here, now, you might say, well, actually, how accurate do you really need to be? Well, you don't have to be spot on. The idea of something like this is to be, use a little bit of artistic license and draw. Now this is just slightly out now, I can just see it. You see where that should be there? Now just again, another advantage I have to mention now is all the mistakes or all the adjustments you make are on this and not on your drawing paper or pastel paper, or watercolour paper. You can, all the mistakes can be made here. Because once you've got this accurate, which I'm pretty happy with that, then you can then transfer that through to your reference. Now when we come to this chin, now this is where, if you want, you can then bring the other grid in. I could have done it with that, but really it's better to it, not to use the grid unless you have to. But now you can see what we've got here. We've got, if we draw a line here, now this time you don't necessarily have to measure it unless you want to, because this is not critical. Landscapes, not unlike animals or human portraits, are not critical. Now you can see now what we've got another line to help us. So now we come down here and that follows through to there and we've got we can put our cross piece in you be as fussy as you like with this and then you've got another line that comes down here on the other side of that center line I've got like that and that drops a bit now it drops pretty good because we're going to be putting another line up there in a minute that's this one okay let's just finish this off the line now, this is where we've got to bring that down at a fairly sharp angle, like that. There we are, there was our chimney. Coming down from here, we can see that that comes into there, into there, and into there, right? Now, this is the next bit, now let's just pull that back again, because we don't really need that now. Next line I'm going to do is that one. Now we know it's got F 
and it's so it's this is the area where we need this area to be done That's again if you want to draw the lines you can but i don't think i'm going to bother here because uh, i'm going to put that in now it's not quite it's not quite no it's just over halfway isn't it if you looked at that it's just over halfway so let's just put it there for the moment just to an indicator it's up to about halfway there and then we've got that and now this comes down here clearing this line like that now it looks a bit rough but this is the way i would draw and you, if you were doing freehand you draw it the same way as well like that then you could just fill it in later now we want that little bit at the top there and then we can just re then maybe make that just a little bit more like that again if you wanted to you could always erase it and do what i did just before with that other one draw that in there this has got a shadow on it so this this is critical or will be critical when and if I want to produce this as a painting, which in fact I will be doing later on. So put a little bit of detail in there like that. Now here we've got that coming down to there, and we've got another little bit jutting out. We can put all that in. Like that. And that comes down to there, and then it meets another line, which I've actually got. Let me show you that line too. Yeah, so make sure you can see all this. That line there. I've already done that. It's part of my other drawing. Now, I'm a bit cack handed here it's because I have to show you, but normally I'd have this facing me. Now we can put this line in. This is the one. Now, if I hadn't got a line there, if I hadn't got that line across there, I wouldn't have any idea of how much slope there was on that. So let's just show you how that works. Now, it starts off here, which is about there. It comes and crosses the line about there. It actually drops slightly, spot on that line, and drops below that line. So basically what we've got is that. Let's see how accurate I am. Now I get you saying, well, do we need to be as accurate as that? Well, you do really, because you see, if you look at this line, see, that's the same as that. If you get it all twisted round, you're not going to, it's not going to be accurate at all. Now, another thing I want to show you here is over here. You notice that on the reference photograph, we've got a bend here. Now, I personally don't like that. And this is where you can use your artistic license. Now, if I was going to copy that exactly, I'd copy it like that. And I'd make it bend out like that and so on. But I don't like that. So I'm going to straighten this up. And I'm going to make it come from there. Down. And as an artist, you've got the option. You can do that or you can do it as you see it there. It's entirely up to you. Bring that all the way down and it will meet the bottom like that. Now I personally prefer that to that. It's another thing you can do. Now there's another interesting thing here. We've got a little window here. Now we've got to isolate that and again I don't think it's really necessary to use the smaller grids. I don't, I very rarely do use the small grids, but what I would do here is this. Let me show you how I do that. If we imagine that's halfway, isn't it? So that would be about there. So if we just drop that just above halfway, because I think it's just a, the top of that is just above halfway like that. And then we come down here and that's, judge, judge it how far you think that is from there. Well, it's about there. So just do that, just a very light line. Now here, it's almost directly under this one, which is this one here, this one here. You see what I mean? In, in relation to the uh, others. So if we were to do that, 
it's not critical that this is actually pinpoint accurate. But it's not going to be far out the time I finish it. Like that. Now, how do you do that? Well, what you do then, look at it again, think, yep, I like that. So that's the top I agreed. Come down here. Like I said, it doesn't have to be spot on. But then, and then erase the lines. Now, no one is ever going to see what you're doing here. What they're going to be is absolutely amazed that you've managed to get that window as accurate as that. There's still a couple more windows because it's been, I'm spending a lot of time on this, but it's important that I show you. Another interesting thing here is this one here, right? So how do we do that? Same or same idea. It's almost on the line, which is handy here because it's on that line. Now, how far below that line? About there. So do the same again, draw a line. And we know that the actual edge of that is down there. So let's bring that down as well to where I, I would consider it to be. And, and on the other side, like that. And, and the distance between here and here would be about there. We've also got to think that this is an angle, remember? We, we all discussed that once, so the angle is going to be like that. All right? That's the bottom. Okay, now what about the, uh, the roof? Well, the roof would come just slightly that side of that line. So that comes down to there. The other line comes down to there. And then we've got the going back to there. Now you can probably now draw that in. And that comes down to there. That goes up to there. You see how much easier this is. Again, we've got the same angle. We've got to be careful of the angles. Don't make it straight. And then we come down like that. Let's just rub that out again. Use your rubber. It doesn't matter how scruffy this is because this is not your drawing. But now you can look at it again and think, right, I'm going to be a bit more accurate now with my drawing. Because I know what I'm looking for. I know my angles. Make that just a tiny bit longer. Because if you look at that and look at that, there's not a lot of gap between them, but it overhangs. And then down quite sharp to there and to there. There we are. Now, isn't that good? Let me do one more window for you and then I'll call it a day. This one is the larger of the two windows. Now you can see here, we've got the same idea again. Let's look at that and do the same sketch I did before we've, we've, it's very handy because that line is running almost exactly on the line of the window so we only have to worry about that one which is about there so do again very light sketch and it drops slightly below so it drops there now that was pretty easy wasn't it am I happy with that I think I am because if we look at the other window there, that's almost spot on the halfway mark. So if we were say that, that's about there. So that was where the next window would be. And because that would also be like that, you know, the same angle as that, we're looking at that. It drops a little below that one. So that's like that. The great thing about this is you're only doing one square at a time. This is the advantage. Now, the other thing, now look at this, that's a, a bigger gap than that would be, which means I'm out somewhere. I think probably what I am, I'm slightly out here. Now, let me pull that back down there. And that one can come out just a little bit further over there, which means that one can come a bit further over there, which means the angle between there and there is better. See how it works? We 
know that that is the angle there. There you go. There we are. And I think I've done enough. I've a little bit more to do, but I won't bother with that. But what I'll do is a moment, I'm going to finish this off, and then I'll show you all of the square drawings that I've done. The uh, human portrait, the German Shepherd, and the landscape all together. I'll just finish it off because it won't take me long to do that. And then you could have a look at all three together. Well, there we are. Three very different subjects drawn out using my square drawing grid system. The lines drawings I presented to you here will be turned into pastel pencil paintings and will appear on our member site in due course. I look forward to meeting up with you again very soon. I'm Colin Bradley. Bye for now.